Well, starting off, New York City has had a new restrictions program that's now in place, as well as enforcement for COVID cluster zones, particularly in the borough of Brooklyn and Queens. Well, we've also got red and orange zone schools, as well as indoor dining. They'll be closed for a minimum of two weeks. Our Bronx reporter Ashley Tiffany has more on this story. Earlier this week, Governor Cuomo unveiled new cluster action initiative, which maps areas throughout the state that have seen COVID upticks in recent weeks. There are three levels of restriction for cluster zones shown on colored coded maps. The highest risk areas are red, surrounding areas are orange, and precautionary spots in yellow. Clusters, all of these areas, you can look at them exactly by the cases. It's not by zip code, it's not by census track, it's not by any political metric, it's only by the number of cases. On Thursday, the city began enforcing new restrictions for COVID cluster zones in Brooklyn and Queens. Mayor de Blasio warned heavy fines up to $15,000 a day for violating the rules of mass gatherings and fines up to $1,000 a day for social distancing and face covering violations. Red zones are defined as an area with 3% positivity cases on a seven day average. This school behind me, along with others in this area, will be shut down for two weeks, but it could extend up to four weeks depending on updated coronavirus indicators. So in the red zone, all schools would be closed. In this case, they already are all public and non-public schools. All non-essential businesses in the red zones will be closed as well. Mass gatherings will be prohibited. Restaurants will revert to a takeout only uh, status and uh, houses of worship will be allowed to have 25% maximum occupancy. Schools, high-risk businesses, and indoor dining in orange zones will also remain closed for two weeks. Places of worship can have up to 33% capacity, and yellow zone areas will remain open. Anna Fusco, a Brooklyn resident who lives in an orange cluster zone, felt indoor dining and in-person schools wasn't a wise decision considering the uptick in positive cases in the city. These are micro events of success that are now maybe unfolding again, so uh, in a bad way. So whatever needs to be done to protect people, I think until there's a vaccine, until we have an idea of where our health care system is going to be, it's really, we should be concerned for the health of people. As cluster zones continue to spread in Brooklyn, Queens, and upstate counties, the Bronx is one borough you don't have to worry about as of now. Executive Director of the Bronx Public Health Office at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, Anita Reyes, says since the early stages of the pandemic, they have been working closely to identify the affected areas using a hyper-local approach. We really looked at areas where we're high traffic area, um, but areas where we could partner with community residents. And so we decided to set up a testing site at these locations. And this is a joint effort with City Hall, with health and hospitals, with the health department, with the test and trace team. So it's a multiple um, agency approach. And what we noticed is that um, we wanted to put more testing in these communities because we saw that people weren't getting tested. So let's meet them where they are. To find out if you live in a cluster zone area, you can visit nyc.gov. Reporting for BronxNet, Ashley Tiffany. And thank you, Ashley. In other news, the Bronx ranks the lowest in city cleanliness. This according to garbage piling up in the borough following budget cuts to the sanitation department. This is also according to a new mayoral scorecard for the months of August and September. Our BronxNet reporter, Darissa White, brings us this story right now. Filthy. I would just say disgusting at this point. Unclean. And a whole bunch of other ways to say the word dirty. The Bronx, along with Manhattan, ranked the most unclean boroughs according to a 2020 mayoral report. And Bronxites are calling on city officials, along with the mayor, to clean things up. The mayor's scorecard comes at no surprise after he announced $100 million budget cuts to the city's sanitation department earlier this year due to COVID-19. In August, the mayor warned that the city could see long-term effects to sanitation if the budget isn't rectified. The budget cuts you've seen already, unfortunately, may only be just the beginning. 
uh, and I'm praying and hoping we can all avert um, further cuts, further layoffs. We have got to focus on getting long-term borrowing from Albany so we can avert uh, the kinds of layoffs that would make the situation you talk about even worse. The new scorecard ranks the Bronx with the lowest percentage of clean streets at 88.8 percent compared to 96.5 percent a year ago. Currently, Brooklyn replaced Manhattan in second place at 94 percent, Manhattan ranking third at 97 percent, followed by Queens and Staten Island. That's ridiculous. Bronx native Katrina Jones is frustrated. She says the city should prioritize sanitation before anything else. I mean, with all the budgets that they're putting put forth for other things, sanitation is important. The parks, everywhere is dirty now, not even other boroughs because of the cuts. The Parks Department saw budget cuts of $85 million earlier this year, and that's when trash began to pile up. We had to balance a budget deficit of $9 billion, and that wasn't an easy, easy task at all. So we went into the budget process knowing that it would be very painful, knowing that we would have to make a lot of really tough decisions. Council member Vanessa Gibson of the Bronx's 16th district acknowledges the tough decisions her and her constituents had to make with budget cuts, but says it will take a collaborative effort to keep the Bronx clean while city council awaits money from Albany. When you put all of that together, a lot of vacant positions at sanitation that were not filled, less staff, less corner litter basket pickups. When you put all of that together, I can honestly understand why the rating was where it is. And it's disappointing, but I acknowledge the challenges we faced. This is just temporary. This is not a permanent problem. This is going to fix itself eventually. And in the interim, Gibson is calling on residents and community leaders to organize cleanup initiatives similar to hers, at least until the city gets the funding it needs. Reporting for Bronxnet, Darissa White. Thank you, Darissa. And that's all the time we have for our Bronx updates. We encourage you to stay with us. We do have a good show coming up ahead for you. Stay with us. Open continues right after this break.